Hey YouTube, this is Chris with the Po' Boy Special Channel and we are back at Scotty's Gunworks. You can see that's a sign on the outside of his door and there's his hours of operation if you ever were wondering. And then, let's go talk to Scotty real quick. Oh, he's missing. Uh oh. Yeah. There's, there's somebody. Oh, there he is. <laughs> hey Scott, how's it going? Going real good. Yeah, how you doing tonight? Doing really good. Excellent, excellent. So. We're over here, you see the camera out, bright lights in your eyes right now, because I got a new camera that's got, you know, lights in your eyes. And uh, what are we going to do tonight? Well, tonight we're going to put a, a recoil pad on a stock. I'm going to show everybody how we cut that, you know, fit it on there and mm -hmm. cut it. Uh, the stock, I then went on ahead a little bit. Uh, the hose that the original recoil pad was walled out. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is I put some dowel rods in there, and I'll show everybody kind of the procedure of that. Just kind of show them what I did, and then we're going to drill the new hose, and then I'm going to cut the recoil pad. Awesome. Okay, well, let's get to it. Well, what we got here is uh, it's a model uh, 1897 Winchester pump. It's an old, uh, real old gun. So I see you've been doing some sanding on this. Yeah, thing. I'm going to uh, refinish this stock right here uh, and the forearm. Of course, we've got two of them. We've got two forearms there, you know, but we only got one stock. But anyway, uh, we're going to put a uh, recoil pad on this. It was all wall it out there so I put some dowel rods in there okay and, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we're gonna go in there in a few minutes and we're gonna uh, drill the new holes for the recoil pad and then we're gonna cut the recoil pad with the same contour and all like the factory would alright well we're here over by the trusty vice grip again yeah what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, cut the uh, the holes in the recoil pad I'll show you how to do that that way you, when you put your screw in there the hole, the hole will disappear oh, okay and so what I what I did is I made me up a little kit right here. Uh, it's even it's even handwritten recoil yeah. pad drilling. Yeah, you know that's so funny. I, uh, but uh, anyway, you just kind of put that on there and raise that like that. Then you'll take a razor blade. See how that's in, and then it just disappears. It sure does. Okay. Same procedure right here. And I believe in the, in the directions, if you get a recoil pad, it'll, it'll probably show you how to do this. <clears throat> Just helps to have the uh, the vice grip and all the tools right handy. Right, uh -huh. Yeah. Of course, you know, your uh, recoil pad's going to come with the screws and all that. And I've got the uh, correct bit that we would use. <clears throat> and what I do... So I can make sure that I get this thing centered right on this stock. Mm -hmm. So I'll take that hole that we just put in there. Now you want to make sure that you keep you some oil on there because eventually, you know, by running that tin and that, you'll you'll make little marks on there. Okay. You'll be able to sit. So if you keep it oiled up. You ain't got to worry about that. <clears throat> Now, what kind of oil was that? I think that's just WD-40. WD-40, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> basically, you can see how it's sticking out like that. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I'll just kind of put it up there like that. Just kind of look at it. Make sure I've got plenty of material there to work with. Make sure everything's good and evened up on each side. Let's see. And it gives me a little impression right there. Yeah, I see it. Okay. <clears throat> and that's where I'll be drilling the hole. All right. Let's see if I can get this camera right for you. There it is right there. I'm just double checking myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Take you a little hammer if you want a little bit deeper one. There it is. I'll just so it. Normal rule is measure twice, cut yeah, once, and exactly. I think except for uh, gunsmithing where you measure ten times and cut once. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because, uh, <laughs> you mess it up, you gotta eat it. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> anyway, we'll just drill the hole in there right there. What little indemption is right there, making sure everything's good and straight. I always kind of oh, look at that. it. That's okay. I always kind of look at it. And... to get your uh, drill bit cleaned out. Yep. yep. 
Now, why do you drill? Why do you drill the pilot hole like that? <coughs> so you're just drilling it in without a hole. Mm -hmm. Well, because if you don't drill a hole in, most likely you, you'll split your wood. There you go. You know, and I always just kind of you know set, set my thread. So this right here, you want to make sure, you know, when you put that in there, that <clears throat> a little oil on it. Okay. Now there's that part. And it's completely hidden, just like you said. Exactly, yeah. You can't even tell it's there. No, sure can't. Now what I'm going to do now is... I missed I'm gonna... it completely, Scotty. Turn that back around Okay, here. there you go. There you go. Yep, yeah, it really is gone. Wow. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of <clears> look at it, making sure there's plenty of uh, material on each side of the stop. Uh-huh. Making sure that, you know, when I cut that contour there, you know, that we don't run out and it's flat. Yeah, we, we don't it to want run to run on down to a point. Of course, one of the good things about this stock right here is I'm going to refinish it. I ain't done through sanding it yet. Right now is a good time to put a recoil pad on it or a butt plate before you start, you know, putting your finish on. That way I can sand everything in together. Now, what kind of re recoil pad is that? This here is a Pacmire recoil pad. Pacmire, okay. Yeah, really good recoil pad. You want to get one that's going to fit the wood. This right here I think is a medium. And the reason why I say that is if you, uh, now this is a small, I'm sorry, but if I was to go with a medium or a large on mm -hmm. this, what would happen is I would grind it down and I would grind down to a plate that's inside the recoil pad. So okay. This one here calls for a small that will give me plenty of uh, material to cut off, and plus I won't hit that metal plate that's in there. That makes <clears> sense. That's why you want to make sure you get the proper size. Same procedure right here. Again, just double check. <clears throat> Use this little tool I made here, just <clears throat> put a little oil on it there. And... Want to make that little indemption so we can do that drilling. <clears throat> now, there it is right there. There it is. <clears throat> And on this one right here, you know, you'll want to kind of be careful. You don't want to come out the toe of that. Yeah. So. And to show from underneath what he was watching out for. <clears throat> yeah, we don't want to. Of course, this right here ain't really long enough. Sometimes, you know, if you if you get down real close, you'll come out the end up there. Yeah. So then you have to drill in an angle there to make sure <clears throat> that don't happen. <clears throat> Again, it's real important to drill a pilot hole because if you don't, especially right here on the end here, you'll bust your wood off. Important, it's really important too to have a drill bit that fits the screw here. This thing is really a small one, but it'll do what we're going to do. We're going to use it for. A little oil on that. <coughs> there we go. Now we can see that it's nice and flush. Mm -hmm. Even really, on both sides? Exactly, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It ain't got to be just 100% perfect. <clears throat> but, of course, the straighter it is, your logo's going to be nice. and Nice, you yeah. Know, when you get this cut down, you know, you don't want the logo to be way over here. Mm -hmm. That's why you want to make sure everything's good and centered up how I did that. Sure. And uh, what we'll do is we'll go in here to the uh, the grinding wheel that I got. I got a little special grinding wheel I use. A lot of people do it different ways. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to do is I got a little, little grinding wheel uh, with a sandpaper belt on it. And I find that that does a really good job at cutting these recoil pads out. So we'll go ahead and do that.
Okay, Scotty, and we got we got to show you in your uh, alien outfit here. Yeah, you want to make sure you put some uh, <clears throat> put your little respirator on because you don't want to breathe this dust right here. Uh, All right. That's the reason why I've got this on. I usually keep my fan on, but under these circumstances, everybody don't worry about it. Okay. This right here is the little wheel I use. All it is is just a something from Brownells. Just fits right on there like that. Fits on your on your buffing machine. <coughs> just start cutting. And you just want to make sure that you go with the same contour as the stock is. That way when the wood runs out, it looks like it's just one, one big piece. Just go real slow. And normally what I would do, and I'll probably do it just, just for the video. Probably take a pause here. And I'll put some tape around that. The reason why I didn't do it this time is because uh, I'm going to finish sanding this and, and put a finish on it. So if I get into the wood a little bit, it ain't going to matter. But usually I'd put a piece of tape there on each side, all the way around it to kind of protect it. If I have the bucket, it won't take the finish off. It'll just hit the, uh, the tape. Ooh. I want it. I won't never get it right even with the wood. In this particular case right here, I might start this up when I'm going to refinish anyway, but for the uh, video sake, I'll probably just go by like I would have had a finish on it. And then what I would do is take it off and then I would just work it with the same contour we got mm -hmm. here. You know. And I'll do that. We'll, uh, stop the camera I'll go ahead and take that recoil pad off then I'll come in here and I'll show you the finishing process for that there okay now I've been taking off the stop and now right here all we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna put it on the wheel you know and just kind of go over this right here just make sure that I, I don't have any dangers of touching the stock about like I said about a nice finish on that this is how I would do that barely touch it Keeping the contour, make sure you're always on the drag mode. You don't want to stick it on like it because it, you know, pull it down like it. You want it to have kind of a drag mode there. That's why I like this wheel because it's, it's just the right width. See what when you put the rubber to this wheel, it makes it smell like a bad night on the Fast and the Furious yeah. burning rubber. Yeah, you gotta keep the fans going, but I knew you were having sinus problems tonight, so I wanted to make sure we kept all this stuff in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm wearing the mask.
And folks, I'm walking in and out. I'm not staying in here. Plus, that fan makes a lot of noise, and they can't probably hear me that good. There we go. That right there should be just about ready to put the finishing touches on it. And I'm just kind of visually inspecting everything, looking at it, making sure there ain't no... Uh, I want to make sure it's a nice smooth roundness. I don't want little cuts, you know what I'm saying? I want it to just be a, a nice rounding effect. I want the uh, plastic and the, the rubber to just kind of contour together in the wood. And that's about right right there. And now what I would do now, cut the wheel off, give me a little piece of fine sandpaper, just kind of lightly just don't get on the rubber part, just stay on the plastic at this point. That's going to take care of any little imperfections in it. It's just going to, going to bring it all in blended. Take a piece of this steel wool right here. I'm gonna hit it with that. So it's really close to woodworking, isn't it? Yeah, it's you know, it's like anything. I mean, mm -hmm. just whether you're using metal or recoil fat or whatever, it's just, just whittling. It's all it boils down to. Shaking it out and making it fit. Now my next step is I would take this wheel right here off. Put it back up there in this little spot. And I've got this wheel right here. We'll just kind of polish the uh, polish the uh, plastic. You want to kind of stay off that as much as you can, but you want to stay on the plastic. And you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. And you might have to kind of hit it with the sandpaper again after you do this, because this right here is where you can really see the uh, imperfections in it. That just kind of, you know, puts a finishing touch on it, gives it a little bit of a glow. Gives it a nice, uh, d nice shine exactly, to it. Exactly, huh? Like it was uh, built that way. Yeah, like it was made that way. And then keep your contours and everything, right? What will happen is, the more you polish on this, that plastic will get smaller and that piece of rubber stays the same size. So you want to make sure you don't over polish. You want to keep it uh, pretty much contoured. Imperfections there in it, and I'll just go back to the sandpaper. Kind of blend them in. And it's got a few little places in there, little imperfections that use ain't no big deal. All in all, you want it to look perfect. I think if I was paying somebody to do this, I want them to do a perfect job. I think they expect the same thing. I don't want to 
uh, hit, hit it on there too hard because it'll, it'll start burning the uh, recoil pad. Then you'll have to do more sanding, more work. Stay focused primarily on the uh, plastic. this real good before we put it back on the stock and then after we clean it we'll look at it and then we'll make a decision whether it's finished or not. We think we need to come back in here and hit it again, we will. Uh, it looks to me like that right there is probably about what we need. Yeah, I'd say for video's sake it right there probably looks about right. Let's go ahead and clean this up and put this back on the stock, and then you can see what it looks like on the stock. So, you finished with the grinding, you finished with the polishing. There it is. That's a finished product right there. Yeah. Of course, the stock, you know, like you said, yeah, you're going to refinish, refinish the, the stock. stock. You know, put a nice finish on that, you know. Then later on, I might tweak this a little bit. Yeah. You know, just kind of maybe trim it down just a little bit more. But that right there kind of gives everybody an idea oh, of what's that, involved in that. That's pretty, pretty darn close it's there. Pretty, uh, pretty accurate. I mean, you know, uh, of course, I'm going to do a little more sanding on this wood here. And it's going to mm -hmm. take the, take it down just a little bit. Therefore, I'll probably have to take that down just a little bit. But not really enough probably to mention. But uh, anyway, you kind of get an idea of what it takes. But that's how you fit. And, uh, yeah, you just want to, you know, keep it good and clean. You can see how it cleans right up. You know. Absolutely. But anyway, there you go. That's that's beautiful. And of course, you know, uh, we do them here. And if anybody's got any uh, any recoil pads or butt plates or anything they want to put on, we can do that. Uh, or they can do it themselves and use this video as a guide. All right. Thank you. This was excellent. I appreciate your time. Thank you.